Right, OK. Uh, we're going to make a start uh, now. Uh, just got a message coming up on the screen uh, to say, uh, you know, remind people that I am recording uh, this part of the meeting, of the course. And I say um, welcome uh, to everybody who's uh, joined uh, this uh, online uh, course. And oh, hello, Alan. We're, we're glad hello. to finally uh, have you here. Uh, you. And say so this is the online course on the Juche idea that's been organised on the initiative actually of the Juche idea study group of uh, Ireland. Uh, and also uh, the uh, British Group for the Study of the Duke Idea and the UK uh, KFA. And the idea of this course is to give people an understanding of the Duke Idea. We've got a total of 12 sessions. Uh, each session will consist of a lecture, and then, uh, you know, people can raise questions afterwards. and. Uh, the lecturer will also set questions for the next time, and we are going to be asking people, perhaps ambi a bit ambitiously, uh, to do homework. But the whole point of this uh, is to deepen uh, the understanding of the Juche idea. So the question is posed, what is Juche? The Duce idea is frequently ignored in some quarters. If you go to the mainstream media and academic sources of the establishment, you will usually find the formulation Duce means self-reliance, which is an extreme oversimplification. At the same time, in my opinion, a deliberate distortion to dis diminish the standing of the Duce idea. A typical example of the garbled, confused and mischievous distortions of the Duce idea was a Daily Mirror article in 2017. And I suppose we can be glad that, uh, you know, the Daily Mirror even actually mentioned uh, the Duce idea. Uh, but anyway, the Daily Mirror stated as follows. Juche is the North's ruling ideology that mixes Marxism with an extreme form of go it alone nationalism, quote, unquote. The only slight truth in this garbled statement is that Juche is indeed derived from Marxism. As to go it alone nationalism, Nowhere in the Juche idea or in any of the writings of the great leader, President Kim Il-sung, Chairman Kim Jong-il and Marshal Kim Jong-un, or in any DPRK policy document, does it say, we must go it alone. Of course, Juche stresses independence. Juche recognises that independence is the life and soul of humans. But this is not the same thing as saying that a country should go it alone. What Juche means is that a country should be totally independent, politically independent, and reject subordination to others and dependence on others. This does not mean that cooperation with others is rejected or that the Juche idea means turning one's back on internationalism. Far from it. Guided by the Duce idea, the DPRK has always been internationalist. It has supported revolutionary and anti-imperialist struggles in many countries, such as Vietnam, Cuba, Angola, and others. From the so-called left, we hear that Duce is simply nothing else than, I quote, Marxism-Leninism applied to the conditions of Korea. And the implied inference is that there is no point in studying it. Worse still, some even claim that Juche rejects Marxism-Leninism. We will return to this subject in a later lecture, which will 
examine the relationship between Marxism and Leninism in the Duce idea. Let's now be done with all kinds of misunderstandings and distortions from the bourgeois establishment, the revisionists and the fake left, and now look at the real meaning of Duce. Duce in the Korean language is a word of two syllables and uh, in, you know, it also explain in Korean language, one character, uh, one written character represents a syllable. So it's two syllables, Ju, which roughly translates uh, as master and Che, which means body or oneself. So it means master of oneself. Basically, the Juche idea is the idea that the people are the masters of the revolution and construction. It stipulates that humans are the masters of their own destiny and that they have the power to carve it out. Juche, therefore, rejects all kinds of superstitious and fatalistic notions about the fate of humans either being predetermined or controlled by an unseen mysterious deity existing outside of time and space. Juche came into being through the experience of the Korean Revolution. There were a number of factors behind the emergence of Juche. Firstly, uh, the existing theories of Marxism and Leninism uh, did not explain the realities of a national liberation movement in a small country like Korea. In fact, during the 1920s, the Comintern saw national liberation movements simply as a reserve force of the proletarian revolution in the advanced countries. When the young president Kim Il-sung became involved in revolutionary activities, he keenly perceived two big problems in the revolutionary movement at the time that were hindering progress. Firstly, in Korea, a, a small country which is sandwiched between big powers such as China and Russia, there was an ingrained habit of flunkism, or put more simply, the eye, uh, sick fancy towards big powers, the idea of looking up uh, to, to big uh, countries and depending on them. This caused big losses to the Korean nation and people. The feudal ruling class had been divided into factions, such as a pro-Russian one, a pro-Chinese one, and a pro-Japanese one. Uh, this contributed to a loss of independence of the Korean nation and its enslavement by Japanese imperialism. Later bourgeois nationalists tried to win independence for Korea by supporting big powers, such as the USA. This did not work. Combined with this, there were tendencies to just rely on a few top level leaders instead of going among the masses. Bourgeois nationalists had tried to conduct the independence movement by relying on big powers and also uh, just conducting it among a few top level uh, leaders. The emergence of the communist movement in Korea, uh, which was inspired by the Great October Socialist Revolution of 1917 in Russia, uh, unfortunately proved to be a false dawn because the communist movement quickly spread into rival factions which competed against each other for recognition from the Comintern and did not conduct revolutionary struggle among the masses. They saw uh, recognition uh, from the Comintern as a goal in itself. The Korean people groaned in despair. The young president Kim Il-sung keenly realized this was not the way forward. The Korean revolution should be carried out independently and by relying on the popular masses. In his speech, the path of the Korean revolution, uh, which was um, made at uh, Kowloon 
uh, in China or Manchuria uh, to a group of young uh, Korean revolutionary cadres in June 1930. He explained his ideas and put forward the Juche orientated line of the Korean Revolution. In the speech, he castigated the factionalists and flunkies, saying as follows. Experience shows that in order to lead the revolution to victory, one must go among the masses of people and organize them and solve all problems arising in the course of the revolution independently on one's own responsibility and in accord with the actual conditions instead of relying on others. End quotation. Drawing uh, on the this uh, lesson, they regarded it as important to take the firm standpoint as masters of the Korean Revolution and that the Korean Revolution should be carried out by the Korean people uh, in a way that was suited to their uh, conditions of the their own country. This speech was the basis of the Juche idea and its starting point. Uh, and you know, it was at this uh, meeting that President Kim Il-sung stressed the masters of the revolutionary struggle are the masses of the people, and only when they are organized and mobilized can they win the revolutionary struggle, end the quotation. President Kim Il-sung also defined the Korean revolution as being an anti-imperialist, anti-feudal democratic revolution rather than being a socialist revolution or a bourgeois revolution. And in this speech, he set forth the line of armed struggle, as well as the original line of the anti-Japanese United Front and the original policy of uh, founding the party for the first time in the history of the national liberation struggling colonial countries. And from this point on, the Korean Revolution advanced un, uh, under the banner of Juche. Since then, the Korean Revolution never looked back and never marked time, thanks to the correct line set, set down at the Kloon meeting in 1930, the line of Juche, the Korean people gained independence and built a mighty independent socialist power of Juche. After liberation from Japanese imperialist rule in 1945, and also the destructive Korean War or Fatherland Liberation War uh, from June 1950 to July uh, 1953, President Kim Il-sung addressed the uh, issue of more thoroughly establishing Juche in the Korean Revolution at he in his historic speech on eliminating dogmatism and formalism and establishing Juche, an ideological work, which was made in December 1955. And he said as follows, what is Juche in our ideological work? What are we doing? We are not engaged in any other country's revolution, but precisely in the Korean revolution. This, the Korean revolution, constitutes Juche in the ideological work of our party. Therefore, all ideological work must be subordinated to the interests of the Korean Revolution. When we study the history of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, the history of the Chinese Revolution, or the universal truth of Marxism-Leninism, it is all for the purpose of correctly carrying out our own revolution. End of quotation. In 1967, speaking to the first session of the Fourth Supreme People's Assembly of the Democratic uh, People's Republic of Korea, President Kim Il-sung laid down the practical and concrete application of the Juche idea to the question of state building and day-to-day -day politics, saying that to thoroughly implement the line of independence, self-sustenance and self-defense to consolidate the political independence of the country and strengthen the foundations of an independent national economy capable of ensuing the
the complete reunification, independence and prosperity of the country and increase the defence capabilities of the country so as to protect its security on the basis of own uh, for forces by establishing the party's idea of duce in all fields. And that is from the uh, speech that is titled Let Us Embody More Thoroughly the Revolutionary Spirit of Independence, Self-Sustenance and Self-Defence in All Fields of State Activity. President Kim Il-sung defined the Duce idea in a number of interviews with foreign journalists in the early 1970s, notably the interview with the Japanese Mancini Shimbun in 1972. In this interview, he said, in a nutshell, the idea of Duce means that the masters of the revolution and the work of construction are the masses of the people and that they are also the motive force of the revolution and the work of construction. In other words, one is responsible for one's own destiny, and one has also the capacity for hewing out one's own destiny. End of quotation. As the baton of leadership in the Korean Revolution passed towards Comrade Kim Jong il, who'd been working at the party central committee since June 19. 64, Comrade Kim Jong-il took on the work of developing in depth uh, the Juche idea and systematizing it. On the 31st of March 1982, he published a treatise on the Juche idea, which is the definitive work on the uh, Juche, in which uh, I would strongly recommend all participants in this course uh, to read indeed it, um, it is really the mandatory uh, reading uh, for this course and in fact uh, the work is like an encyclopedia of the Duce idea it is divided into five chapters uh, such as origin of the Duce idea philosophical principle of the Duce idea socio-historical principle of the Duce idea guiding principles of the Duce idea and the historic significance of the Duce idea. In the work, comrade Kim Jong-il emphasized that Duce stresses man's role as the master, saying, the Duce idea defined man as the master who dominates the world, not merely as part of it, and thus established a new world outlook, unlike preceding ones, which regards the world and its changes and progress with man its master at the center the duce idea and stand on world with man in the central place provide a sure guarantee for the independent and creative cognitional activities and practice of man who transforms the world and shapes his destiny end of quote it was comrade kim jong-il who stressed the philosophical side of the duce idea Comrade Kim Jong-il also write works such as Problems of Education in the Duce Idea and, and on establishing the Duce Outlook on the Revolution. To conclude, the Duce Idea is the idea that man is the master of the world, that the popular masses are masters of the revolution. In practical terms, Duce means Duce in ideology, independence in politics, self-sufficiency in the economy, and self-reliance in defence. In future sessions, we will look at different aspects and tenets of the Duce idea and the principles of the Duce idea. And just to say uh, two things to uh, conclude uh, the lecture. Uh, firstly, um, to quote uh, Dr. Vishnuaf, uh, an Indian journalist who used to be the uh, one of the director generals of the International Institute of the Duce Idea, who I met several times, uh, say passed away in 2018, uh, sorry, 2014. Uh, he always uh, would say, uh, study the Duce Idea, it will cost you nothing but pay in plenty. And uh, with regards uh, 
to reading. You know, I've already mentioned uh, the work of comrade Kim Jong-il uh, on the Duke Chardier. And there's also this uh, booklet here. I hope everyone can see it. Uh, you know, Duke Chardier answers to 100 questions. Um, that is online in several different places. Uh, and you can probably also easily obtain a hard copy of it. Anyway, I'd uh, like to thank everyone uh, for listening, and I will stop now and we will take some questions. Thank you. Welcome uh, to the second session of our online study course on the Duke idea, and I have prepared a short lecture which is titled The Philosophical Principle of the Duke idea: An Overview. This section will look at the uh, philosophical principle of the Duke idea. In the first uh, section, we looked at the uh, fact that uh, Juche is not simply about, about self-reliance. Sorry, that is the ice cream van outside. <laughs> of, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, the, say the Juche idea is not simply about self-reliance, but it is, is a, philosoph uh, a philosophy, a world outlook. Of course, to, to many, philo uh, philosophy may seem a remote or an abstract uh, concept. My son had to study philosophy at school and said he found it boring. I think mean, many people, when they hear the word philosophy, uh, automatically think of ivory tower intellectuals at Oxford University or Cambridge uh, University. A lot of people uh, view uh, philosophy as being irrelevant and pointless and uh, as having uh, no relationship uh, to uh, uh, everyday life. In fact, philosophy uh, is quite fundamental. It's about the outlook on the world about the study of knowledge. It is fundamentally about the role of man in the world. Most people have some kind of philosophy and outlook on life, even if it is not a particularly progressive or scientific one. It can be said that philosophy became discredited in the eyes of many because of reactionary and obscurantist philosophies promoted by various exploiting classes throughout history in order to hide or mystify exploitation or to present it as being something uh, that was ordered from on high or something that was actually eternal and could not be changed. During the Middle Ages, religious philosophers held debates about how many angels could dance on the head of a pin while crops failed and many people starved to death. The Duce philosophy, by contrast, is centred on humans. Therefore, it is a down-to-earth philosophy, which is both rational and scientific. For many centuries, philosophy was dominated by those who asserted that the world was created by a deity or supernatural being that existed outside of both time and nature. Later, in the 19th century, the German philosopher Hegel advanced the concept of an absolute idea or spirit determining everything. The great achievement of Marx, Engels and Lenin was they asserted the primacy of matter and shattered backward and superstitious illusions about the world. In a later talk, 
we will look at the relationship between Duce and Marxism-Leninism. It was comrade Kim Jong-il in his famous thesis in uh, titled On the Duce Idea, published in March 1982, to mark the 70th birthday, uh, birth anniversary of President Kim Il-sung. And comrade Kim Jong-il stressed in the work the philosophical aspect of the Duce Idea and developed it in depth. It can be said that comrade Kim Jong-il established the philosophical structure of the Duce Idea. I would strongly recommend reading on the Duce Idea in order to complement this lecture. In fact, on the Duce Idea is a work that should be studied by all progressives anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist, socialists and communists, as well as serious students of philosophy. Comrade Kim Jong-il also wrote a number of other works on the philosophy of Juche, such as On Some Questions in Having an Understanding of the Juche Philosophy, On Having a Correct Viewpoint and Understanding of the Juche Philosophy, and the Duce philosophy is an original revolutionary philosophy. On the Duce idea consists of five chapters, one of which is on the philosophical principles of the Duce idea. In the work, comrade Kim Jong-il defined the basic philosophical principle of the Duce idea, as he wrote, the Duce idea is a new philosophical thought which centers on man. As the leader said, the Duce idea is based on the philosophical principle that man is the master of everything and decides everything. The Duce idea raised the fundamental question of philosophy by regarding man as the main factor and elucidated the philosophical principle that man is the master of everything and decides everything. <clears throat> that man is the master of everything means that he is the master of the world and of his own destiny. That man decides everything means he plays a decisive role in transforming the world and in shaping his destiny. The philosophical principle of the Duce idea is the principle of man-centered philosophy, which explains man's position and role in the world. The leader made it clear that man is a social being with independence, creativity and consciousness. End of quotation. I think uh, this is a very well uh, rounded definition of the uh, philosophical essence of the Duce idea. The attributes of independence, creativity and consciousness <clears throat> are not innate, but are socially acquired. We will consider in more detail later uh, the concepts of independence, creativity and consciousness. Uh, these will be discussed at future sessions. For the, uh, for the first time in the history of philosophical thought, the concept of man being the master was put forward. Duce placed man at the centre of everything. It can be said that the thinking of comrades Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il totally revolutionised philosophy. It is important to understand that Duce does not set man aside from the material world. Man is part of the material world, but at the same time has a definite role within the material world. As comrade Kim Jong-il wrote, the Duce idea uniquely defined the domination of the world by man who is the highest developed product in the material world, as well as the principles of its transformation and progress, thus shedding a new light on the 
foundation of the world outlook. The world outlook based on the philosophical principle of Duce is a world outlook which centered on man. Uh, uh, end of quotation. I think this is a very important teaching and a key to understanding the Duce philosophy. Some dogmatic opponents of Duce have tried to assert that uh, Duce puts man as standing above the material world or even outside it. As the quote above uh, shows, uh, this is uh, complete nonsense. Uh, and it's also, I think, a misunderstanding uh, that uh, when we say man is the master of the world, uh, that means that we are asserting that man has some kind of mystical or magical quality. Uh, this is not true either. Man is the most highly developed form of matter. Unlike animals, man can change his environment. Animals survive by adapting themselves to the environment, whereas man changes his environment. Polar bears could never survive in the jungle, nor could lions and tigers survive in the Antarctic. Man is totally different to animals who live by biological instinct. It can be said uh, in passing that some of the worst reactionaries uh, try to equate man with animals and claim uh, man is uh, an animal. And uh, some uh, bourgeois philosophers and theorists have overstressed the uh, role of the biological instinct uh, in man. Uh, you know, an example of, of this uh, is, is Freud. Uh, for example, and, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, at this stream end, you know, we, we have, you know, fascists who, who talk about, you know, the uh, struggle for survival and, uh, you know, and sort of, you know, try, try to bring everything down to sort of animal-like competition, uh, you know, of the, uh, uh, you know, survival of, of the fittest. Uh, so, you know, it's very important to grasp, you know, the uh, uh, difference uh, between uh, man and animals. Man's mastery over the material world uh, is exemplified by the fact that man has learned to dam rivers or divert their course, to go cultivate crops and to harness the energy of nature whether it is the wind, the sun, or waves. Some people may point out that some animals show some kind of skill and intelligence. For example, beavers building dams. However, beavers have done the same thing for centuries and have not progressed beyond that. Whereas man's mastery of science and technique has developed by leaps and bounds. <clears throat> Man has gone from building steam engines and sailing ships to building space rockets within uh, the space of just over a century. Indeed, the pace of scientific development is accelerating, which shows that man's role as the master of the world is increasing all the time. The Duce philosophy is a truly scientific philosophy which correctly reflects the reality of the world. It is not determinism of any kind and it is not uh, excess existentialism. Duce is also different to the so-called human philosophy of bourgeois liberals. It's not an abstract philosophy, but a philosophy about achieving change, about achieving independence for mankind. As comrade Kim Jong-il said in 1990, the Duce idea, our party's outlook on the world, is the guiding idea of our times, which eliminates the absolutely correct way 
of achieving independence for the popular masses. It is the banner of the revolutionary people's cause of independence and the banner of socialism. End of quote. Juche is a philosophy that empowers people to be masters and to change the world. Guided by the great Juche philosophy, the Korean people have made great changes by carrying out the anti-imperialist, anti-feudal democratic revolution and the socialist revolution and building a powerful new socialist country of Juche where the masses are masters of everything. Thus uh, concludes my short talk on the philosophical principle of the Duce idea and overview. And I would like to raise the following uh, questions for next time. Number one, what do you understand about philosophy? Number two, how would you argue with someone who says philosophy has no relevance to anything? Number three, how is man different from animals? Number four, what is the contribution of Duce to philosophical thought? And uh, at the next session, uh, we will uh, be talking about the concept of independence. Uh, thank you for listening. Okay, uh, this uh, is the core part of this session. And today, I'm going to speak about the concept of independence in the Duce idea. This is the third part of our study course on the Duce idea. In the first part, we had a genuine, general introduction to the Duce idea. And in the second part, an overview of the philosophical principle of the Duce idea. We learnt uh, to quote the words of comrade Kim Jong-il, that the philosophical principle of the Duce idea is the principle of man-centred philosophy, which explains man's position and role in the world. The leader made it clear that man is a social being with independence, creativity and consciousness. End of quotation. Independence, along with uh, creativity and consciousness, is one of the three pillars of the concept and definition of man according to the Duce idea. So, what does it actually mean? Some may say that independence simply means that a country is or should be independent. Others thinking along similar lines may talk about the independence of a political party or a trade union or a social organisation. Often, when people refer to someone as being independent, it means they can look after themselves or that they have their own opinions on this or that matter and are not influenced by others. Ironically, years ago, there was an old-fashioned term, independent income or independent means, which meant someone who did not depend on paid employment for their living, i.e. a capitalist or a bourgeois person. The concept of independence in Duce is far more profound and deeper in its meaning than the everyday usage of the word independence. In fact, for a time, uh, the Korean word chadusong was used in DPRK foreign language publications instead of independence because it was felt that the word independence did not do full justice to the term. However, some people outside of the DPRK were not happy uh, with this. So there was a reversion back to uh, using the term independence. Independence cannot exist without 
creativity and consciousness. We will look at these in detail in the later sessions. Now, let's look at what the great leaders, comrades Kim Il-sung and comrade Kim Jong-il, said about independence. In his classic treatise on the Juche idea, comrade Kim Jong-il said as follows, Man is a being with independence, that is, an independent social being. Independence is an attribute of a of social man who is desirous of living and developing in an independent way as master of the world and his own destiny. On the strength of the, this quality, man throws off the fetters of nature, opposes social subjugation of all forms, and puts everything at his own service. Independence is the life and soul of man, the social being. When independence is referred to as man's life and soul, it means social and political integrity. Man has a physical life and also social and political integrity. Earlier, in 1972, President Kim Il-sung, speaking to journalists, referred in detail to independence, saying, Independence is what keeps man alive. If he loses independence in society, he cannot be called a man. He differs little from an animal. We might say that socio-political life is more valuable to man than physical life. He is a social being. If he is forsaken by society and deprived of political independence, although he seems alive, he is virtually dead as a social human being. That is why revolutionaries deem it far more honourable to die in the fight for freedom than to remain alive in slavery. End of quotation. And if people um, want the reference for this quote, it is from On Some Problems of Our Party's Duce Idea and the Government of the Republic's Internal and External Policies subtitled Answers to Questions Raised by Journalists of the Japanese Newspaper Manshini Simbun, 17th of September 1972, and it is in the collection on the uh, Juche idea and the Korean people's uh, struggle for its application on page 86, this uh, book here. I don't know if people can see. Indeed, independence is the life and soul of man. When independence is referred to as man's life and soul, it means social and political integrity. Man has a physical life and also has social and political integrity. Physical life is what keeps man alive as a biological organ organism. Social and political integrity is what keeps man alive as a social being. As man is a social being, social and political integrity is more valuable than physical life. Accordingly, if man is deprived of his social and political integrity, he is the same as dead, even though he's uh, physically alive. What is the difference between man's life and animal's life uh, if the ma uh, life of man? is uh, simply eating, dressing, and keeping one's uh, life. Therefore, people fight against the oppressors for independence, social and political integrity, as long as they are alive. In history, there have been many righteous and honourable people who have devoted their lives to the independence of the popular masses and for the freedom and happiness of the people. There have been countless examples and so many heroes. Many, I think, here will recall the sacrifice 
of Major Ernesto Che Guevara as one such uh, example. Uh, you know, the great uh, Cuban and Argentinian revolutionary who died on the battlefields of Bolivia. In the DPRK, there are many stories about heroic soldiers who devoted their valuable lives for the independence of the country and for the freedom of the people and for the Korean Revolution. Uh, and I will uh, give you the following example. Uh, and this uh, is um, Lee Subok. And he wrote as follows, I am a youth of liberated Korea. Life is valuable. So it is the hope for the bright future. But my life, my hope and my happiness are less valuable than the destiny of my fatherland. I have only one life, but no life, no hope and happiness are so noble, so beautiful, and so great than to devote my only one life for my only one fatherland. And uh, Ri Su Bok was a hero of the Korean People's Army, who at the age of 18 silenced uh, an enemy pillbox, a US pillbox, by sacrificing his own life. Uh, and the story of Ri Su Bok powerfully enc uh, encourages uh, uh, the masses of Korean people in the sacred struggle for independence. And uh, though the physical uh, life of uh, Ri Su Bok uh, ended when he was 18 years old, uh, his valuable as uh, social and political integrity is still alive. And in fact, they're immortal because, uh, you know, he will be remembered, uh, you know, from generation to generation. Social and political integrity are so valuable and immortal that they cannot be exchanged or bartered for anything else. Some people may doubt uh, if uh, physical life has no value at all. Of course, physical life is valuable for man. So, you know, people want a long life in good health and they uh, develop uh, health services and hospitals and also sports. But uh, simply just to the maintain, uh, you know, uh, physical life, uh, uh, cannot be the uh, fundamental uh, purpose of life. You know, we, we are not uh, animals. And I I mean, I remember uh, as a kid, uh, my father pointed out to me that our pet cat, he said, all, all it can do is eat, uh, you know, drink milk and, and sleep and very little else. Uh, you know, I think that's... Uh, uh, a good point about, uh, you know, animal life and, uh, you know, how man is a higher form of life. Anyway, uh, physical life only has value when it serves uh, glorifying the social and political integrity. The social and political integrity of man is maintained through the struggle to defend and realise independence. Social and political integrity of an individual is given and maintained through the struggle for the country and nation, for the independence of the popular masses. Those who do not make the struggle for the country and nation, the independence of the popular masses only pursuing indolence and uh, pleasure uh, can uh, never have social and political integrity, nor be an independent social being or lead the life worthy of a man. Indeed, independence is the basic attribute that keeps man alive and the life and soul of man a social being. 
This is the concept of independence in the philosophy of Duce. So um, this is part four of the course on the Duce idea, and today we're going to look at the concept of creativity. As we've learned in previous lessons, creativity, along with independence and consciousness, is defined as one of the core attributes of man or humans by the Duce idea. People may think creativity is about art, about uh, creating wonderful paintings, or writing stories, or maybe even cooking. And, of course, creativity can be expressed in many fields of human life. Uh, today, we're going to learn about how the Duce idea views and interprets creativity. It can be said that the attributes of independence, creativity and consciousness form a trinity. They are interlinked and each attribute cannot exist in complete isolation from the others. Creativity is another essential feature of man as a social being. Man has independence and also creativity and is thus fundamentally different from other living things in the world. Man is a being with creativity, that is a creative social being. General Secretary uh, Kim Jong-il wrote in his uh, classic uh, treatise on the Duce idea that was published in March 1982, uh, wrote as follows, creativity is an attribute of a social man who transforms the world and shapes his destiny purposefully and consciously, end of quotation. And I think uh, that uh, puts the concept of uh, creativity in a nutshell. Cre uh, creativity is an attribute of uh, a social man who transforms the world and shapes his own destiny with purpose and consciously rather than uh, blindly or acting on instinct. Because uh, man has creativity, is able to transform nature and society according to his will and his demand. Man's creativity is not just limited to the sphere of transforming nature to suit his needs, he can also change society. Old reactionary, exploitative and unjust societies can be overthrown and replaced by socialist societies in which oppression and exploitation are abolished. Socialism fully unleashed man's creativity. Now, look. let's look in detail at what the... Uh, uh, concept of creativity actually involves. Firstly, it is the quality of social being who transforms uh, the things and the phenomena in the surrounding world actively and purposefully in conformity with one's desire and interest. Man approaches the surrounding world not passively but actively and acts not blindly, but purposely, from an independent desire and interest not to be subordinated, but to dominate. Perhaps some people doubt whether it is creative uh, uh, activities that animals dig caves and build nests with twigs or leaves. Of course, such a doubt is reasonable because monkeys and chimpanzees do indeed get food by using stones and sticks 
and beavers build embankments to protect uh, their places by uh, cutting down trees with their teeth. But such uh, activities of animals are not actually creative, even though some people may think they are. If so, the methods of their activities uh, would have changed and developed according to uh, conditions and circumstances with the passage of time. But their activities are the same as in the past and at present. Animals have dug caves uh, for thousands or even ten thousands of years and are still digging caves to live. And animals made their nests long time ago and are now doing the same thing continuously. Monkeys, too, use stones and sticks for their living for years, but they have not developed the tools even a little. This means that animals' activities are not creative. In other words, it shows that animals have no consciousness and accordingly cannot make any purposeful and conscious transformation of the surrounding world. Basically, the activities of animals are governed by instinct. However, man is fundamentally different from this. Of course, sometimes people uh, use the natural circumstances and uh, living materials of the surrounding world as they are, even in the case they change and remake the st uh, structures, forms and characteristics in conformity with their interests and demands. People abolish or change the unfavourable, unnecessary living conditions in their favour. They work to improve their environment rather than adapting themselves to it. They build uh, embankments or change the uh, direction of the flow of rivers in order to prevent floods. Since they change and remake structures and forms and characteristics of things and phenomena in the surrounding world, they are able to uh, dominate the surrounding world for their sake. Over the uh, de decades and centuries, man's creativity his ability to change and remake the world have increased greatly. In the past hundred years, man has flown into space and developed atomic energy. Diseases that were once considered incurable have been conquered by medicine. Creativity is also a quality to make new things. People not only change and remake things, uh, in the surrounding world, but they create new things that did not exist uh, in ready-made forms. They are not satisfied with given things and continuously create new things from the independent desire of the people. The most important characteristics of the creative activity of man is that he does not confine himself to partially changing and remaking given things, but creates new things that did not uh, already exist. Of course, this means uh, that people did not create the materials which are not in the world, but create things that have completely different uh, qualities by using materials. Modern information tech uh, equipment, such as robots and computers, which uh, are replacing uh, heavy manual labor with automatic machines and the material and uh, mental wealth necessary for living conditions are the product of the creative creative activity of people by their creative activity man make makes new things and artificial things that can not being made by nature itself and continuously expands the scope of domination of the surrounding world with these things. Man not only changes and remakes the things of phenomenon in the surrounding world actively, but 
makes uh, new things. Thus, he is a creative being, the quality to remake and change things uh, in the surrounding world and to make new things are linked with each other as the content's creativity and is manifested in human activities to transform the world in a unified way. Scientific technique and technical knowledge is the basic factor to define creativity, one of the essential attributes of man. Scientific and technical knowledge is a social consciousness that reflects the essence of things and phenomena, uh, the law of motion and the methods to apply it. Man can conduct creative activity to abolish the new and create to abolish the old and create the new because he has scientific and technical knowledge of course creative ability creative activity of man is connected with experience and function skills and physical strengths but practical experience functions and skills do not play a decisive role uh, than scientific and technical knowledge in the creative activity of man furthermore physiological act, uh, activity and physical strength of man itself are only the material basis and guarantee for his creative activity the main thing in determining creative uh, activity of man is the scientific and technical knowledge which are cr the creative ability of man because of the continuous development of scientific and technical knowledge the creative ability of man can develop more and more man has scientific and technical knowledge and can thus conduct creative creatively and fully display creativity with the continuous development of scientific and technical knowledge indeed uh you know we can see this happening all around us what is important here is the fact that the scientific and technical knowledge <clears throat> is not quite the same with uh, creativity although they are closely interrelated with each other only when man has scientific and and technical knowledge uh would he be a um, being with creativity creativity is the concept to characterize the creative creative activity man makes with scientific and technical knowledge on the other hand scientific and technical knowledge is the fundamental guarantee that enables man to have the creative activity and the proof that he has creativity this should be made clear as there is the saying knowledge is power which is indeed true man is the most powerful being in the world as he has creativity and will be the complete master world with the continuous development of his creative ability and that that's the end of the lecture and the questions i'm going to uh, pose are as question are as follows number one what do you understand by creativity number two do animals have creativity number three do you think there are limits to creativity number four how is creativity expressed in everyday life Concept of consciousness in Duce. Welcome to part five of our online course on the Duce idea. In the past sessions, we've been concentrating on learning about the philosophical principle of the Duce idea. Earlier, we learnt that the concepts of independence and uh, creativity and uh, consciousness form the three pillars of the Juche concept of human beings, which forms a core of the philosophical concept of Juche. 
These are all interrelated. Humans cannot be independent and creative without having consciousness. Today, we will learn about consciousness, which is defined as the, four, as the third core attribute of man, according to the Juche idea. Consciousness is different to independence and creativity, but at the same time, it is closely related to them. Comrade Kim Jong-il, in his immortal treat treatise on the Juche idea, published in 1982, wrote as follows. Consciousness is an attribute of social man which determines all his endeavours to understand and reshape the world and in himself. Because he has consciousness, man understands the world and laws of its motion and development and reshapes nature and society as he desires. Consciousness guarantees the independence and creativity of man, the social being, and ensures his purposeful cognition and practice, end of quotation. I think the above quotation gives a very good explanation of the concept of consciousness. Consciousness is about understanding the surrounding world and how it develops and its uh, laws of development. It is about cognition. To change the world, we must be conscious. Without consciousness, man cannot do anything. He cannot exhibit independence and creativity. He cannot transform the world. Consciousness underpins independence and creativity. Like independence uh, and creativity, it is socially acquired. It's not innate or inborn. Uh, and, you know, we stress that consciousness, uh, uh, just like independence and creativity, is the attribute of a, a social being. Consciousness, like independence and creativity, is what distinguishes man from other living things in the world. Whilst other living things uh, act through instinct, man conceives the plan of his action through thought before starting cognition and transformation. Consciousness is a sophisticated function of man's brain, which is the most developed of man's physical organs. The brain plays the central role in the activity of human life and consciousness, which is a function of the brain, commands and regulates all activities of man. Some may think it is stating the obvious, and some may even disagree. But all the actions of man are conscious actions. Let's give a practical example from everyday life. Something that may be uh, familiar to some people. It is man's instinct to wake up at sunrise. However, one may need to wake up before sunrise to go to work or maybe to travel to an airport. So conscious man uses an alarm clock. He sets it for the time he needs to wake up. Uh, this uh, is an example of the conscious activity of man. It can be said that conceiving and planning are the first process of all the activities to cognize and transform and are a key factor that ensures the purposeful cognition and practice. In other words, the cognition and practice of man are the process of conceiving an idea and making a plan and putting them into practice. This shows that all activities are conducted by man are consciously controlled actions. When man encounters a series of problems and situations in the course of cognition and transformation, he neither sits idle, nor does he go on with what he's doing without proper measure. He copes with them positively and adjusts and controls all his activities so that he can achieve the goals of his activities. For example, when destruction is caused by flooding, man, conscious of the damage caused, uses scientific knowledge, 
to take flood prevention uh, measures. And, you know, similarly, you know, in regard to, you know, forests being destroyed by forest fires, you know, man takes uh, fire prevention uh, measures. Similarly, man has become aware of the contradictions of exploitative societies and has strived to overthrow them and build new societies without exploitation and oppression. In other words, socialist societies. While consciousness directs all the activities of a person, ideological consciousness is the most important. The consciousness, uh, the characteristic of ideological consciousness is that it is a form of social consciousness reflecting man's demands and interests. Man leads a, a life under different natural surroundings and social conditions. Some are favorable to man and some are not. For this reason, man comes to have some requirements and interests in the course of his social life. Ideological consciousness uh, is a consciousness which reflects such requirements and interests of people through rational thinking. The character of ideological consciousness is determined by the demands and interests of a class in a given society. In antagonistic class societies, there exists an independent ideological consciousness reflecting the desire for freedom from the fetters of both nature and society. But there is also a reactionary ideological consciousness mirroring a desire to oppress and exploit others. And also there is a slavish ideological consciousness characterized by obedience to and submission to exploitation and oppression. The change of development, the change and development of society gives rise to a new ideological consciousness. Ideological consciousness is different from scientific knowledge, which is a reflection of objective realities. Ideological consciousness is also different from feelings, which are a direct an emotional experience of reality. Ideological consciousness, scientific knowledge and feelings belong equally to the category of consciousness and their difference is relative. They are expressed in a close unity. For example, the socialist patriotism of the DPRK is based on the knowledge of the superiority of the duce based socialist system of the DPRK, coupled with the feeling of love for the socialist system and the ideological consciousness of the need to defend the socialist system of the DPRK. Or to give another example of our own work uh, in the KFA, the Korean Friendship Association is based on the knowledge that the stories of the DPRK uh, in the mainstream media about the DPRK false. This is combined with the ideological consciousness that we need to defend the DPRK with no uh, concession and the feeling uh, of the need to defend the truth. Consciousness is the most superior attribute of man, which makes him a powerful and superior being. Of course, independence and creativity are two uh, also essential uh, features of man which make him the most superior and powerful being. However, independence and creativity presuppose consciousness and are guaranteed by it. Consciousness makes man the dominator and transformer of the world by ensuring the independent and creative activities of man who understands and remoulds the world. That is why the conscious, why consciousness is the highest of all the attributes of man. Comrade Kim Jong-il defined consciousness as one of the essential features of man and gave a comprehensive and profound philosophical expression of its essence, its manifestations, its position and 
uh, that it holds in the essential features of man, thus making an enduring contribution to further developing the philosophical viewpoint on man as expounded by the great Duce idea. Thank you for listening. The questions I'm going to set uh, for uh, the next session is uh, question one, is consciousness the same as knowledge? Question two, what is the role of consciousness in transforming society? Question three, what kind of consciousness exists? Question four, how does consciousness, independence and creativity Okay, welcome to part six of our online course on the Duce idea, which is organized by the British Group for the Study of the Duce Idea, uh, Korean French Association of the UK, and the Duce Idea Study Group of Ireland. In the previous sessions, we had a basic introduction to the Duce Idea and then examined the philosophical. Uh, basis of the Duce idea. Now we're going to transit to or move on to looking at how the Duce idea is applied in practice and what it actually means in terms of state policy. In order to do so, we must first have a general overview of the guiding principles of the Duce idea before looking at each feature each feature of the Duce idea's application to policy questions. Some people wrongly see the Duce idea as something mystical or abstract, as they do not understand it, it, it correctly. It is hoped that this part of the course will serve to deepen the understanding of the Duce idea and dispel illusions and misunderstandings about the Duce idea. Learning about the guiding principles of the Duce idea will also demonstrate that the Duce idea is a universal concept that can be applied to all countries and simply not just Korea. The importance of the guiding principles of the Duce idea was defined by the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il in his classic work on the Duce idea published in March 1982. And he said, the guiding principles of Duce idea are the guide to establishing Duce in party and state activities and in all spheres of revolution and construction. They are explicit fundamental principles which must be observed in successfully carrying out the revolution and construction by adhering to the independent and creative stands and enhancing the role of ideological consciousness. In order to apply the Duke idea to the revolution construction, it is essential to observe thoroughly the guiding principles of the Duke idea. End of quotation. It can be said that the two basic pillars, the foundation stones of the guiding principles of the Duke idea, are the independent stand and the creative method. The independent stand and creative me method are in turn an expression of man's role as master of everything. Comrade Kim Jong-il said of the independent stand, and I quote, if the revolution construction are to be carried out as required by the Duce idea, independence must be maintained and realized in party and state activities, end of quotation. The independent stand means maintaining and defending independence. The creative method means de depending on the popular masses, finding methods suitable for the situation and giving precedence to ideology. For the purpose of this course, we are going to concentrate on the independent stand. Uh, those who want to uh, read up about the creative method, I would refer them to uh, the 
uh, above mentioned work of uh, comrade Kim Jong il on the Juche idea and other study materials on the Juche idea. The application of the independent stand in practical terms means the following Juche in ideology, independence in politics, self sufficiency in the economy, and self reliance in defense. We are going to look at each of those in the sessions that follow this one. Juche defines the independent stand as being totally essential to the revolution and construction. It is not an optional extra or a bolt on or a gimmick or something that can be thrown away, but a fundamental principle that must be maintained in the revolution and construction at all times. The experience of the Korean Revolution and indeed of other countries in the world shows that this is true. In the revolution and construction, the masses of each country must display their role as masters of the revolution and construction. No one can replace them in the struggle. Of course, there may be cases when internationalist aid is important but it will always be secondary or supplementary. It cannot replace your own efforts. To give a practical example, in 1936, the Popular Front in Spain established a republic and waged a revolutionary war against the counter-revolutionary fascist Franco forces that were in collusion with the imperialist allied forces at the time, the former USSR supplied the Spanish people with goods which uh, were equivalent to the value of 14, uh, sorry, 417 million rubles and heavy weapons such as planes and tanks and sent military advisors and volunteers. In August 1938, the Spanish International Coordination Committee was founded in Paris to send an aid fund of 300 million francs and a lot of food, clothes and medicines for two years. A meeting of communist parties of 17 European countries was held and an international support campaign was active uh, for the fighting Spanish people. 35,000 volunteers from 54 countries, including Britain, went to the Spanish front, so the number of fighters mounted up to more than 1 million. However, the Spanish uh, People's Front failed to check the counter-revolutionary advance of the Franco-fascist clique, and in the end, they were deprived of uh, their people's uh, government. What was the reason? Of course, uh, it was attributable to the treacherous conspiracy of the imperialist powers, and particularly ar arms and open intervention by fascist Germany and Italy. But the main reason the, the Spanish People's Front failed to defend the gains of the revolution to the last, although international support for the Spanish Revolution was ardent, lies in the fact that the People's Front failed to fortify the internal forces firmly and rely on them uh, thoroughly. There are many uh, examples of revolutions that received massive outside assistance only to fail because their own internal forces were not sufficiently strong and had not been built up. The revolution and construction is the struggle of the masses for independence. If the masses are to realize their independence through revolution and construction, they must solve all problems in the revolution and construction according to their own independent judgment and conviction. If uh, one does not have one's own sense and behaves in, in uh, this way or another according to uh, the request of others, he cannot carry out the revolution construction at all in his own interests. So he cannot realize independence. 
the revolution in construction are the undertaking of the popular masses and of the masses themselves. As the revolution and construction are their own undertaking, the masses ought to solve all problems in the undertaking on their own responsibility and initiative. If one depends on other strength, he will not be able to carry out the revolution and construction and realize his own independence forever. Since the revolution and construction are the struggle for independence, dancing to the tune of others and depending on others' power, without the independent stand are contrary to the nature of the revolution construction. Next, the reason why the independent stand must be maintained in the revolution construction uh, is that the revolution construction are carried out with each nation state as a unit. Country and nation are, is the unit of social life and the stable collective of people who are formed through the historical process. Men, social beings, have lived in a certain uh, social collective since the first uh, day they came into being. This collective has ceaselessly changed and dealt through the process of the people's struggle for independence. A clan can be said to be the first social collective developed from a tribe, and a tribe into a race and further to a nation. A nation that was formed in this way was combined with state machinery to become a more stable social collective, a nation state. Nation states are strictly distinguished uh, because each of them is a firm social collective that is formed on the basis of commonness in uh, blood, language, culture and territory. As long as states and nations exist, people inevitably live and conduct with uh, the nation state as a unit. Since the revolution construction are carried out with each nation state as a unit, masters of the revolution construction in each country are the people of the country. The revolution construction in each country is the undertaking of the country that must be carried out on their responsibility. Therefore, the popular masses must maintain the stand and master towards uh, their own country, the independent stand. To die sophisticated technical means rapidly develop accordingly relations and exchanges a lot among the countries, nations have become closer on a worldwide scale. The Western imperialists describe it as if the world is becoming, and I quote, a world without borders, and I quote again, integrated and homogenous. But that is nothing but an absurd so uh, sophism distorting the truth. As society develops and the relations and exchanges, among nations become close, commonness in the life of countries and nations increases, but the commonness has an independent and individual development of each country and the nation as its premise and its basis. Since each country and nation has its own ideology, system, history and culture and shapes its own destiny, the integration of the world is inconceivable. This tells that one must not give up the independent stand, but must maintain it more firmly, although society develops in relations and exchanges among countries because has become close. The commonness among them may be increased. Maintaining the independent stand is the very correct way for all countries and nations to defend themselves and achieve their independent development and prosperity. Thank you for listening. And now uh, I'll set the following questions. Question one, what do you see as the relationship between the guiding principles of the Duce idea and the philosophical principles of the Duce idea? Question two, what do you understand about the independent stand and creative method? Question three, why is the independent stand important? Question four, 
how would you argue against someone who says independence is not important? Well, welcome to part seven of our online course on the Duke Chair Deer. We have progressed from looking at the philosophical aspects of the uh, Duke Idea and have now moved on to the guiding principles of the Duke Idea, which uh, govern its application in actual life and state policy. In this session, we are going to look at Duke in ideology and independence in politics, which should be exciting. I've decided to combine the two subjects as politics is closely linked to ideology. In his famous 1982 treatise on the Duke idea, the great leader comrade Kim Jong-il wrote as follows, establishing Duce in ideology is the primary requirement of the masses revolutionary struggle for independence, the revolution and construction a man's conscious activities. Establishing Duce in thinking, therefore, is the only way to establish Duce in politics, the economy, defense, and all other domains. To establish Duce in ideology means having the consciousness uh, that one is the master of the revolution uh, and construction, thinking, doing everything centering on the revolution in one's own country and acquiring the viewpoint and attitude of solving all questions by one's own talent and initiative. End of quotation. Thus, uh, without establishing Duce in ideology, you cannot establish Duce in other fields. It's as simple as that. Uh, it means that uh, all thinking should be dis from the standpoint of one's own country and firmly based on the reality of one's own country. It means familiarising oneself with the history and geography of one's country. At the same time, it means uh, thinking creatively and finding original solutions rather than looking for ready-made solutions which may not fit the reality of one's country. Establishing Duce means equipping people with the consciousness that they are the masters of the revolution construction in their own country. It means that the revolution should be equipped with its own independent ideology. This is not as easy as it may sound. In Korea, the struggle to establish Duce in ideology was particularly acute because Korea had a long history of flunkyism and sycophancy towards big countries. And it was, of course, geographically sandwiched between big powers such as Russia and China. Flunkyism affected both the nationalist and communist movements in Korea. The nationalist movement failed because it looked towards big powers and did not rouse the masses. The early communist movement just split into factions, each worshipping a foreign power. Comrade Kim Jong-il defined flunkyism as follows. Flunkyism is an attitude peculiar to slaves, serving and worshipping big powers and developed countries, and an attitude of nihilism which means looking down upon one's own country and nation and despising them. If one is inclined to be servile, one would be in the habit of groveling before others, following them if others take to revisionism, one would follow suit and if others adopt dogmatism, one would act likewise. As the leader said, if a person falls into flunkism, he would become a fool. If a nation is servile to big powers, the country would go to ruin. And if a party is subservient to big powers, 
it would make a mess of the revolution and construction, end of quotation. So as uh, we can see, uh, in order to establish Duce in ideology, flunkyism must be opposed and eliminated, as well as dogmatism, revisionism, opportunism and factionalism. Within the Workers' Party of Korea, an intense and sharp struggle took place to establish Duce and to eliminate unsound and reactionary ideologies. In People's Korea, socialism had to be built, not only uh, uh, through struggle against uh, imperialism and class enemies, but against a hidden internal enemy, dogmatists, flunkists, and factionalists. These people would argue against different policies of the Workers' Party of Korea, either saying that such and such policy was not in the classics of Marxism, Leninism, or that this had not been done in a big country or it was not in the textbooks. Such elements like to claim to be pure Marxists, purer than uh, pure. But in fact, their approach was actually extremely reactionary and counter-revolutionary. For example, opposing collectivization. The WPK also struggled hard against modern revisionism, which emerged in the international communist movement in the 1950s. Some anti-party factionalists wanted a copy the revisionist policies of another country and tried to introduce modern revisionism into Korea. This was strongly resisted by President Kim Il-sung. In 1955, he published a seminal work on eliminating dogmatism and formalism and establishing Duce in ideological work in which he said, what is Duce in our party's ideological work? What are we doing? We are not engaged in any other country's revolution, but solely in the Korean revolution. This, the Korean revolution, determines the essence of Duce in the ideological work of our party. Therefore, all ideological work must be subordinated to the interests of the Korean revolution. End of quotation. This is a good and succinct summing up of the need to establish Duce in ideology. Later, he said how the struggle to establish Duce in ideology was intimately linked to the struggle against modern revisionism, saying that in, uh, in 1955, therefore, our party set forth the definite policy of establishing Duce and has been persistently urging an energetic ideological struggle to carry it through ever since. The year 1955 marked a turning point in our party's consistent struggle against dogmatism. It was also at the time, in fact, that we started our struggle against modern revisionism that had emerged within the socialist camp. Our struggle against dogmatism was thus linked up with the struggle against modern revisionism, end of quotation. Another central plank of maintaining the independent stand in the revolution in construction, along with establishing Duce in ideology, is, of course, independence in politics or political independence. As comrade Kim Jong-il uh, said, Politics is of decisive significance in social life. Without independence in politics, it would be possible, uh, it would be impossible to talk about independence at all. Duce in ideology is expressed above all by independence in politics and self-sufficiency in the economy and self-reliance in defense are two guaranteed by independence in politics.
maintaining independence in politics means upholding national independence and sovereignty of one's people defending their interests and conducting politics by relying on them. End of quotation. To establish and maintain political independence means in the first place maintaining sovereignty and independence. The DPRK is a prime example of this. It is acknowledged by both friend and foe. Even the reactionary conservative for, uh, British former Premier John Major said in her backhanded compliments uh, that uh, the DPRK has undiluted sovereignty. This of, this, of course, true. The DPRK is not a member of any military or political bloc. It does not have for, um, foreign troops stationed on its soil. The DPRK has always maintained uh, an independent stand. During the split in the international communist movement, the DPRK maintained relations with both the USSR and China, as well as, uh, as Albania. The DPRK opposed modern revisionism from an independent position, a position of struggling while uniting and uniting while struggling. It was because of its duce based independent and independent ideological and political uh, position that the DPRK avoided the pitfalls of sectarianism, ultra leftism and dogmatism that some who had opposed revisionism fell headlong in, into. The DPRK has an independent foreign policy based on its own needs and not dictated to by another country. As stated above, the DPRK maintained relations with both socialist countries. On some foreign policy questions, the DPRK took a different position to the USSR and on others, a different position to China. And uh, in one case, that of recognizing the Saharan Arab Democratic Republic, it took an independent uh, position of both China and the USSR. At the same time, political independence uh, did not mean that the DPRK rejected internationalism or adopted as the uh, Daily Mirror once said, go it alone nationalism. Comrade Kim Jong-il wrote, independence is not in conflict with internationalism, but is the basis of its strengthening. Just as the world revolution is inconceivable without the revolution in one's own country, internationalism, divorce from independence cannot exist. As a matter of principle, international solidarity must be ba based on freedom of choice and equality. Only when it is founded on independence will international solidarity become based on free choice. The best way, end of quotation, the best way to make a contribution to the world revolution is to carry out the revolution successfully in your own country first. That is making a decisive contribution to the world revolution. And it is also a fact uh, that the DPRK, uh, in terms of international solidarity, has always uh, punched way above its own weight. And uh, I de detailed that in my uh, book, Career of Duce. It can be said that the Duce idea excellently uh, synthesized or combined the national and international duties of the working class. And uh, that concludes the lecture. And I'm going to set the following uh, questions uh, for next time. And I think, uh, you know, uh, this time I'll, I will circulate them several times. Uh, question one, what does establishing due chain ideology mean? Question two, what are the barriers 
to establishing Duce in ideology. Question three, why is political independence so important? Question four, how can you achieve political independence? So uh, those are the questions. I'm going to stop recording now. I hope... Uh, Welcome to part eight of our online course on the Duce idea. In the previous sec session, we heard about establishing Duce in ideology and independence in politics. These are the two of the guiding principles of the Duce idea, basically the nuts and bolts of applying Duce in practice. Economic self-sufficiency is the guiding principle to implement independence in the economic field. To implement independence in the economic field is an important issue to consolidate the independence of a country and ensure due chain ideology, independence in politics, self-reliance and defence, and provide people with an independent and creative life materially. Uh, you know, it's um, basically the building blocks of everything. What then does it mean to be self-sufficient in the economy? The great leader, comrade Kim Jong-il said, in order to implement the principle of economic self-sufficiency, one must build an independent national economy. Building an independent national economy means building an economy which is free from dependence on others and which stands on its own feet, an economy which serves one's own people and develops on the strength of the resources of one's own country and by the efforts of one's own people. In other words, this means to build an independent national economy." End of quotation. The building of an independent national economy has two contents. One is to build the economy that serves the people. The other is to build the economy that depends on its own resources of the country and the strength of the people. It is one of the essential contents of building an independent national economy to build an economy that serves the people. To build an economy that serves the people means to build an economy that uh, uh, can satisfy diverse and ever increasing material needs with one's own production. Such an economy is a multi is multi-sided and comprehensive in its structure. When the economic structure becomes multi-sided and comprehensive, one can satisfy diverse and ever-increasing material needs with one's own production. So the economy that serves the people in the country should be multi-sided and comprehensive in structure. Independent economy should be based on the latest science and technology that is necessary to satisfy ever increasing material needs on one's own efforts and to liberate the people from arduous labor. The latest science and technology means high level of scientific and technological basis of the economic activities and makes it possible to rapidly grow production by enhancing productive efficiency and thus makes the national economy serve the people's independent and creative life. It is the other essential content of building an independent national economy to build the economy that develops depending on the resources of the country and the strength of the people. The direct agent of building the economy is the people and their country has raw materials and fuels to build and develop the economy that serves the people. Of course one can use foreign strength and resources in building the economy but it is impossible to build the economy according to one's own 
will and desire when depending on foreign raw materials and fuel. Dependency on others means the deprivation of one's economy, which is sub subjugated. This can be understood by the fact that many developing countries in Asia, Africa and Latin America that have managed their economy depending on foreign capital received millions of dollars of emergency relief funds uh, from the IMF and World Bank after the destructive financial crisis and thus had to suffer under the submissive <coughs> mandate imposed on this adjustment of structure, losing economic self-sufficiency. The economy de depends on the resources of the country and the strength of the people is the economy that develops depending on one's raw materials, technique and national technical personnel, one's own resources, technique and national technical personnel are inedible factors for building an independent national economy. Only depending on these factors is it possible to build a self-sufficient economy. The building of an independent national economy has the essential contents of building the economy that serves the people and develops on its own resources and strength of its own people. This makes it possible to uh, achieve economic self-sufficiency. Why then is it necessary to be self-sufficient in the economy? That is because the economy is the material basis of social life. In other words, this means that social life cannot have material guarantee apart from the economy. In social life, there are political and cultural life, but these lives cannot exist apart from material conditions. Man can only lead political life only when he eats and gets dressed and for this end. <coughs> he should have different material needs. So in the case of cultural life, it is impossible to lead cultural life such as education, art, literature, sports and public health apart from the material means. In this sense, the economy is called the material basis of social life. This being the case, only when one is independent in the economy is it possible to ensure independence of the people in all fields of social life. When one is independent in the economy, one can consolidate the independence of a country and lead an independent life. Economic self-sufficiency is one of the important criteria of an independent sovereign state. Although one is independent in politics, it becomes meaningless if one is dependent in the economy. In other words, the country uh, is an independent country in name, but not in actuality. Apart from the economy, social life is inconceivable. How can a country that is independent on the economy be called an independent sovereign state? A country that depends on others in the economy will follow others and cannot be free from subordination as slaves in debt. In the past, many countries were deprived of their countries and had to live colonial slaves' lives. Today, many countries gained political independence but cannot be politically uh, completely free from the domination and subjugation of the imperialists. This is because countries were dependent and backward economically. If a country is not independent e economically, that country begs to others, eventually being subjugated economically and bringing no meaning to political independence. Economic self-sufficiency is necessary to live on one's own efforts 
The Korean proverb goes as follows. The money in the father's pocket is no better than one's own money. It is more so in relations among countries. As long as there is a, the uh, countries and borders, economic life is made with the country with a country as a unit. So each country should manage its economy on its own efforts. Dependency on others is a wrong idea. Begging to others is shameful. It is therefore important to be self-sufficient in the economy, to live on one's own efforts. When one is independent in the economy to produce what one needs mainly on one's own, one can lead a dignified life. Only in this process can one import uh, what one needs through foreign trade. One can buy certain things, not all things. If one buys all things, one will spend a lot of money and consume a lot of time. For example, in the in the DPRK in the 1950s, uh, they uh, uh, they didn't uh, want the uh, country. Uh, you know, some of the factionists didn't want the country to produce tractors. You know, the factionists claimed that a small country doesn't need to produce them because it can buy them uh, from other countries. But President Kim Il-sung pointed out that if uh, the DPRK buys 3,500 tractors annually, it would take more than 10 years to buy 35,000 tractors and stress that Korea should produce uh, them on their own although it costs a lot of money. So Korea produced the first one as a sample and went uh, ahead and further produced uh, many factories. What would be the result uh, if the DPRK uh, had brought them, bought them from abroad uh, instead of building a tractor factory? then uh, it would have begged those countries even today and it would have failed to mechanise the uh, rural economy. This tells us that economic self-sufficiency leads to dignified and independent life. Economic self-sufficiency is the inevitable condition for ensuring due chain ideology, independence in politics and self-reliance in defence. Economic self-sufficiency is the material conditions to ensure the principle of Duce in ideology. To establish Duce in ideology means to arm the people with independent ideological consciousness. If one is dependent on the economy being subordinated, one will have bad ideas such as flunkism, and dogmatism, which goes against our independent ideology. What is the reason then? This is because one is dependent on others economically. If one is weaker than others and dependent on others, one will look upon others. When one is self-sufficient in the economy, one can manage the economy by, on one's own, enhance national pride and self-respect and establish duce in ideology. Economic self-sufficiency makes it possible to maintain independence in politics. If one is economically dependent, one is not free in the political field. In this case, one should follow the instructions of others. When each country is independent in, in the economy, it can repute others' interference and pressure and ensure independent politics. Economic self-sufficiency also makes it possible to keep the uh, principle of self-reliance in defence. If one is dependent on others in the economy, one cannot build a powerful military industry, so it is impossible to equip the army with modern weapons, nor arm the people militarily, nor make the whole country a fortress. 
if a country has no military industry, it would uh, have to import huge amounts of military equipment uh, from other countries, but it would be difficult. And also, uh, you know, I would ha add here uh, that, you know, some big countries might want to uh, supply weapons one day and another day uh, they might change their minds or they might demand high prices for them. In order to adhere to the principle of self-reliance and defence, it is necessary to provide weapons and combat equipment on one's own. And for this end, it is important to build a powerful self-sufficient economy. Like this, economic self-sufficiency is an inevitable requirement for realising people's independence in all fields of social life. Uh, this concludes uh, my talk and the questions for next time, which I hope people will study and provide answers uh, to next time, is uh, question one, why is self-sufficiency in the economy vital? Question two, how does self-sufficiency in the economy underpin Duce? <laughs> Question three, is Duce the same as autarky? Question four, controversial one, you believe Britain should be self-sufficient? Uh, so that, uh, that's the uh, question to just stop the... Uh... Right, well, good evening. Welcome to part nine of our online Duce Idea study course. We've been looking at the guiding principles of the Duce Idea, or if you like, the nuts and bolts of how Duce is applied in practice. In previous sessions, we looked at Duce in ideology, independence in politics, and self-sufficiency in the economy. Now we turn to self-reliance in defence, which is very important and also at this moment very topical given the recent self-defensive missile tests of the DPRK. In order to ensure independence and prosperity of a country, it is necessary to strengthen military power as well as politics and the economy. The issue of military affairs is a very important one concerning the destiny of a country. Those countries that neglected military affairs were subjugated, so people regarded military affairs as the most important affairs among state affairs. What then is necessary for a country to defend itself? The principle of self-defense, self-reliance in defense, clarified by the Duke Chadir, gives the correct answer to this question. Chairman Kim Jong-il said, Implementing the principle of self-reliant defence means defending one's own country by one's own efforts, end of quotation. In other words, this means that the people in each country build powerful military power to defend the country by themselves and solve all theoretical and practical problems arising in the building of military powers and military activities in the interests of the people and according to the specific conditions of the country. The principle has three basic points. One is to make the building of military power and military activity serve the defending of the country. Second one is to make defending the country de uh, depending on the strength of the people uh, and on their own military power. The third one is to solve all problems arising in the building of military power and military activities in the interests of the people according to specific conditions of the country. It is one of the important points in keeping this principle to make the building of military power and military uh, activities serve the people and the defence of the country. This means 
to make the building of military power and military activity uh, become means to defend one's sovereignty and the people's independent and creative life. It is a prior requirement in realizing independence in military fields to make the military affairs uh, defend the security and interests of the country and its people. The people's demands and interests in the military field provide a military guarantee for the people to lead independent and creative lives as true masters of society, free from the subjugation of other countries. This demand and interests come from the independence and expression of their independence. It is possible to defend independence in the military field when the building of military power and military activities serve to defend the demand and interests of the people and defend the sovereignty of the country. The second point of the principle of self-reliance and defence is to make the defending of uh, the country uh, depend on the strength of its people and on their own military power. Like in all other affairs, the masters of military affairs are the party and the people in that country, and it is the people who build military power and defend the country. No other nation can replace the masters in defending country. And I would add here the DPRK's own experience and the experience of other countries illustrates this point. During the anti-Japanese arms struggle, the anti-Japanese guerrillas requested that the USSR, the first workers and peasants state, supply a hand grenade to the guerrillas. However, no hand grenade factory was supplied. So the anti-Japanese guerrillas under the leadership of President Kim Il-sung created the Yongil bomb. During the Fatherland Liberation War, the Korean People's Army had to retreat because fraternal countries were not able to supply enough weapons in the time required. Lastly, the experience of the Cuban Missile Crisis showed it was not a good idea for a small country to rely on a big country for its defence. The party and people in each country can get help from, uh, uh, from fraternal and friendly countries in defending the country from the imperialist invasion. Such support and cooperation are important in defending the independence and sovereignty from the imperialist invasion, but they uh, play no more than an, an additional role. And the main one is the strength of one's own. When one's strength is prepared, external assistance can be useful. It is impossible to re repudiate foreign invaders under the condition that each country's internal force and its own defending power are not prepared, however big the foreign assistance is. It is therefore in important to build one's own strong military power to defend oneself. And on that basis, solve all problems in military affairs, uh, finding the defending power in the strength of one's own people. The third point of the principle is to solve all problems arising in the building of military affairs, military activities in the interests of the people and according to the specific conditions of the country. Each country has different political economic and military potentials and different armed um, military equipment to graphical conditions and specific conditions. This being the situation, it is necessary to solve all problems of rising the building of military affairs and military activities by one's own decision and according to the specific situation. If not so, it is impossible to build strong military power and avoid twists and turns in the war for defending the country. In order to defend the country by oneself, it's necessary to solve all 
uh, problems arising the building of military affairs and military activities in the interests of the people according to the specific conditions of the country <clears throat> to defend oneself by one's own strength is the principle and standpoint of self-reliance in defense what then is necessary to maintain the principle of self-reliance in defense that that is firstly to ensure self-reliance in defense is the fundamental principle in building an independent state as all the countries can cannot win at the same time the revolution those countries that won the revolution earlier should build a new society un, under the conditions in which the imperialists remain imperialism is the root cause of invasion and war between 1900 and 1930 there have been 24 uh between 1900 and 1938 there have been 24 wars world war one the invasion of poland by hitler and germany brought uh world war ii and in the last 60 years there have been lots of wars the root cause is imperialism which uh, has uh, aggression uh, and plunder as its bread and butter, basically. Even today, when the Cold War has supposedly ended, the imperialists resort to power politics and have created a second Cold War. In the year 2000, the amount of world military expenditure was $842 billion dollars of which uh, $268 billion uh, were, was the US share. Japan spent $30 billion uh, 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 dollars. Uh, France, 29 billion. Germany, 23 billion. So basically the share of the Western imperialists was uh, $610 billion. If the imperialists have no intention to make war, why do they keep uh, increasing military ex uh, spending? In fact, you know, uh, the figures I've just quoted are very old ones. You know, they probably double that uh, today. You know, we can see uh, the US and Britain increasing military expenditure. Uh, they not only increase military expenditure, but also instigate their puppets to make war and directly in, uh, interfere, uh, you know, with arms whenever they have a chance. This was well uh, prove, uh, proved when the US uh, provoked the Gulf War, uh, the bombing of Yugoslavia, uh, the invasion of Afghanistan and other incidents and of course um we see in afghanistan where that all ended up how is it possible to build an independent sovereign state without one's own powerful military power as long as the imperialist is, uh the imperialist the root cause of war and aggression continue to exist to defend oneself is the nature of man. A country should have means to defend itself. It is impossible to be an independent sovereign state, people and territory from the imperialists' uh, uh, aggression. Herein lies an important reason why it is necessary to adhere to the principle of self-reliance in defence. This is also because the self-reliant defence is the military guarantee for political independence and economic self-sufficiency. Only with self-reliant military power is it possible to defend political independence. In the past, many countries were deprived of their uh, sovereignty because they had no military power strong enough to defend themselves. This is also proved by the historical fact that the Korean people 
had to suffer from disasters and misfortunes by the foreign aggressors because they did not have military power to defend themselves. As a matter of fact, Korea was strong in the era of the Kogyo dynasty. Kogyo, which was known as the most powerful country in the East, had a 300,000 strong army. The army men and people were educated from the early days in patriotism and learned mil military arts and defeated hundreds of thousands of enemy invaders displaying its high dignity. But the feudal rulers in the Reed dynasty corrupted politics regarding it as a peaceful period, thus considerably weakening, weakening overall state and military power. Lee Song Gi, who became the first king of the Ri dynasty after overthrowing the Koryo dynasty with arms, feared a coup and resorted to the politics of stressing literary men and neglecting military men. Therefore, in the Ri dynasty, state power was weakened and at the end of the dynasty, the country was in a very poor status. With poor military power, the feudal rulers had to open the door to the imperialists who invaded with a few guns aboard a ship. Due to the policy of stressing literary people and neglecting military people, the country became weaker and weaker. And at last in 1907, its army was tragically dissolved by force by the Japanese imperialists. So the Korean people uh, lost their national army and the royal palace was guarded by an aggressive Japanese army, eventually being deprived of the country. Like this, apart from self-defensive military power, political independence is inconceivable. Self-defensive uh, military power is necessary for economic self-sufficiency too. The building of an independent national economy requires peaceful co co conditions which are guaranteed by military power. Peace cannot be maintained by begging. It can be only kept by the struggle against imperialism. It is useless to fight against imperialism only with empty talk. For instance, in order to provide peaceful conditions for economic construction, it is uh, necessary to have more powerful uh, self-defensive uh, military power to destroy the imperialists' war moves. Peace is maintained only by the arms of justice. Thanks to the army-based politics created and implemented by uh, Chairman Kim Jong-il in Korea, the people rose in the building of a powerful socialist country, learning after the revolutionary spirit soldiers, fighting trades and work styles created by the People's Army, frustrating tricks of the imperialist allied forces. Practical fighting experience of the Korean people who defended the cause of Juche socialism. Overcoming all trials proves that the army-based politics that solves all problems on the principle giving priority to military affairs and pushes ahead the overall cause of socialism regarding the People's Army as the pillar of the revolution, depending on it, is the main guarantee for the victorious advance of socialism against imperialist, provocative and aggressive moves. To adhere to the principle of self-reliance and defence is the correct way to defend dignity, sovereignty and revolutionary achievements under the conditions in which uh, imperialism still exists and the aggressive moves of the imperialists become extremely vicious. Thank you for listening.
evening. Uh, welcome to part 10 of our online course on the Duke idea. And in this part, we were going to um, perhaps uh, sail into controversial waters. We're going to examine the relationship between Duce and Marxism-Leninism. And as some might say, why, why do we need to do this? We've decided to include a session on the subject because in countries such as our own, the subject often comes up. It's an old horse chestnut. It's often brought uh, up in quite a polemical, contentious way. With some people saying, Juche is an abandonment of Marxism, Leninism, and therefore cannot be supported, or it needs to be rejected. Others, uh, you know, claiming to be more sympathetic to the DPRK, uh, claim that Juche is simply Marxism, Leninism applied to Korea. And that there's little or no point or value in studying it. We boldly say that both points of view are wrong. Firstly, let's look at the argument that uh, Duce rejects Marxism. If Marx was alive today, he would be impressed by the amount of people who uphold his theories because of the scientific accuracy of his critique of capitalism. At the same time, he would be horrified, mortified by the fact that some people have transformed his ideas into something like the Bible, a tablet of stone, which is then used to attack new theories. In the days when Marx and Engels were alive, there was not a single socialist country in the world. Powered flight was not yet possible though it was talked about, space travel did not exist and antibiotics did not exist. There have been big changes since those days. So, you know, as to the specific charge that uh, Duce re uh, rejects Marxism, uh, in fact, comrade Kim Jong-il wrote in 1983, Marx's greatest contribution to mankind lies in the fact that he advanced Marxism, which provided the working class with a powerful ideological and theoretical weapon of the liberation struggle. And the work that this is from is Let Us Advance Under the Banner of Marxism, Leninism and the Duke Idea, May the 3rd, 1983. This shows a great and profound respect for Marx. Later, in 1992, comrade Kim Jong-il and his work, work, Socialism is the Life of Our People, urged that the work Capital by Marx should be studied and pointed out that uh, uh, when writing articles about the limitations of Marxism, Leninism, we must not fail to explain the exploits their creators accomplished. Only when then can we give a correct understanding of Marxism, Leninism to the people and deal a blow to the imperialist and bourgeois restorers, restorationists who are cavilling at this ideology, <clears throat> end quotation. Thus, while being aware of the historical limitations of classic Marxist-Leninist theory, People's Career strongly respects the great achievements of the founders of Marxism-Leninism. As comrade Kim Jong-il said, our party and people respect Marx, Engels, Lenin and Stalin as the leaders of the working class and speak highly of their distinguished service. The DPRK regards Marx, Engels, Lenin and Stalin as the distinguished forerunners of the revolution. Uh, and, you know, in Korean society, in the DPRK, uh, it's very important to respect, uh, you know, elders and forerunners. 
Uh, simply uh, pointing out that Marxism has historical limitations is not the same as rejecting Marxism. In fact, People's Career is one of the few countries in the world where you can actually take a university course in Marxism, Leninism, and dialectical materialism. And you can look this up on Kim Il Sung, uh, the website of Kim Il Sung University. So it's basically a false statement that Marxism, Leninism uh, has been rejected. In fact, it can be said that Duce actually had Marxism as one of its component sources, just, uh, just as Marxism itself uh, had the uh, component sources of, of uh, English politi uh, classic political economy, such as Adam Smith and David Ricardo, the utopian uh, socialism and uh, Hegel. As a young man, President Kim Il-sung deeply studied the works of Marx and Lenin, such as Capital, the Communist Manifesto, the State and Revolution, and Imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. At the same time, President Kim Il-sung was inspired and guided by the idea of G1, or Aim High, that had been developed by his father, Kim Hyung-jik, the leader of the Korean National Association, the idea of Chi Won means aim high to achieve independence and sovereignty, and also to achieve independence by relying on the strength of the masses. This concept set Kim Hyun Jik uh, apart from the bourgeois and conservative Korean nationalists who did not believe in relying on the masses. President Kim Il sung developed his father's ideas of Chi Won and basically <clears throat> took them further. Because Korea was a feudal society in the colony and also many Korean people had been forced into exile in Manchuria, in uh, China, existing Marxist Leninist theories on the revolution could not offer um, ready-made solutions to the issue of the national liberation struggle and achieving independence. So President Kim Il-sung developed new ideas and theories, which became known as the Duce idea. This was basically outlined in the historic speech, uh, the path of the Korean revolution made in June 1930. After liberation, Korea faced the questions of carrying out the anti-imperialist, anti-feudal democratic revolution and the socialist revolution, as well uh, as the question of building a new society in the country, which had been divided into two by imperialism, with the southern half occupied by an aggressive imperialist power, US imperialism. There were not ready-made, instantly applicable solutions to be found in the classic Marxist-Leninist texts. People's Korea, uh, in People's Korea, socialism had to be built uh, through not only struggle against imperialism and class enemies, but against a hidden internal enemy, dogmatists and factionalists. These people would argue against different policies of the Workers' Party of Korea, even saying that such and such policy was not in the classics of Marxism, Leninism, or this and that had not been done in a big country. Such elements uh, claim to be uh, pure Marxists and you know, actually invoke Marxism. Uh, and they say they claim to be uh, you know, purer than pure, but in fact, their approach was actually extremely reactionary and counter-revolutionary. For example, they tried to oppose collectivization. Uh, you know, if, if they'd been listened to, uh, you know, agriculture and the DPRK would have been left in uh, hands of private farmers. Ironically, uh, such arguments that were shat shattered decades and decades ago in people's career still echo among some on the left today. 
Duce is simply not Marxism, Leninism applied to Korea and not simply for Korea alone. It is worth remembering uh, that when Lenin and Stalin successfully led the Great October Revolution and, Bo and Bolshevism appeared, some right-wing social democrats in this country said Bolshevism only worked in Russia, that it was only uh, suitable for Russia and that it must be confined to Russia because it represented a, uh, quote, a Slavic and Asiatic mentality. Is this not similar to the Orientalist and social chauvinist sneers about the Duce idea today? During the course of applying Marxism Leninism to Korea creatively, President Kim Il sung carried it to a new higher level. People in the DPRK began to talk of the Duce idea or Kim Il Sungism rather than revolutionary Marxism Leninism. Whilst Duce inherits many features of Marxism Leninism, it has original features as well. Comrade Kim Jong il, in his work on correctly understanding the originality of Kim Il Sungism, October 2nd, 1976, stressed that. When we say Kim Il Sungism is an original revolutionary theory different from Marxism Leninism, we never mean that there are no derivations from Marxism Leninism. At present, there is also a tendency to contrast Mar Kim Il Sungism with Marxism Leninism, allegedly, to emphasize its originality. But it is originality, but its originality is not necessarily proved only by contrasting it with <clears throat> Marxism-Leninism, denying its derivations from the latter. Both Kim il -Sungism and Marxism-Leninism are revolutionary ideas which have provided solutions to the revolutionary practice of the working class. Duce stresses that man is the master of everything and the popular masses are the masters of the revolutionary instruction. Juche stresses the subjective factor as well as the objective factor. According to Juche, the masses are the subject of the revolution rather than the object of the revolution. In the past, socialist countries that followed Marxism and Leninism emphasized the material economic factor and believed that once socialist relations of production were established, then the consciousness of the masses would automatically change and as a result, ideological work was neglected. Worse still, revisionism appeared, uh, emerged. Duce stipulates giving priority to ideology. Basically, ideological work is the motor of building socialism. I think if we approach this issue with honesty and objectivity, we can see that there are some limitations in Marxism and Leninism. For example, what happened in the former uh, socialist countries where in line with conventional Marxism and Leninism, uh, they stressed the material economic factor and neglecting ideological work leading to the collapse of socialism. In capitalist countries, <clears throat> It was assumed by orthodox Marxists that a revolution would break out because the contradictions of because of the contradictions of capitalism, but this did not happen. I can remember myself in the 1980s where un, how unemployment rose to 3.5 million in the UK. I thought that the unemployed would take to the streets and revise in revolt, but this did not happen because they were ideologically brainwashed. Today, revolution does not break out in, cap in uh, capitalist countries, not because living standards are high, but because of the grit of capitalist ideology on people's minds. Today, People's Career, led by Marshall Kim Jong-un, stands imposingly as a country duce, a country of uh, 
independence, self-sufficiency and self-defense. Because of the uh, of self-reliance and self-development, the imperialist sanctions will fail and the DPRK will march to final victory. And it would be a great thing if many countries broke with imperialism and took the road to Duce. Duce carries forward the ideas of Marxism in the modern era and at the same time is an original uh, ideology of independence, of liberation for mankind. Thank you for listening. And the questions I'm going to set down for next time is, number one, does Duce really reject Marxism? Number two, could it be said that Duce is a, a synthesis of the idea of Chi Wan and Marxism-Leninism? <clears throat> Number three, how does Duce overcome limitations in Marxism-Leninism? Number four, how do you argue against someone who says that Duce is limited to Korea? So thank you for listening and I will stop the recording now. Right, well, uh, again, welcome uh, to uh, part 11 of the online Duke Ideas study course. Uh, and good evening from London. And uh, this is the uh, Duke, online Duke Ideas study course uh, organised by the British Group for the Study, the Duke Idea, Duke Ideas Study Group of Ireland, NKFA UK. And uh, you know, we're going to look at what Duce has achieved in practice and look at how we can refute anti Duce arguments. And of course, it won't be exhaustive uh, because, you know, we've got a limited amount of uh, time. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I'm not trying to deliberately promote my books here, but I would recommend people read my books in defense of Duce Korea and Korea of Duce uh, for, you know, as background reading for this part of the course. It's very important to know about the achievements of Duce in practice, because as we say in England, uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, uh, indeed. And uh, some uh, enemies of people's Korea and the Duce idea uh, will say that uh, Duce has achieved nothing, or even worse, that still, that its results are very uh, negative. Uh, in fact, by applying the guiding principles of the Duce idea, namely uh, Duce and ideology, independence in politics, self sufficiency in the economy and self-reliance in national defense, the Korean people achieved liberation from fascist imperialist Japanese rule and went on to build a powerful state of independence and self-reliance. By applying the Duce idea, the Korean people built an advanced socialist society on the ruins of war. The DPRK is a nuclear power a socialist nuclear power of Duce and an intercontinental ballistic missile power. This is a great achievement. The DPRK's solid independence is probably one of its greatest achievements. The DPRK does not have foreign troops stationed on its territory. It is not a member of the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank or the Asia Pacific Economic community. There are no foreign banks in the DPRK. The DPRK declined to join the uh, old socialist bloc Council for Mutual Economic Assistance grouping and did not join the Warsaw Pact. The DPRK controls its own armed forces and weapons. Its nuclear deterrent 
is a genuine independent nuclear deterrent. No other country controls the DPRK's nuclear weapons. When I was a child, I read a book about science and learnt that Britain's nuclear missiles could only be fired when two keys were inserted into the controls. One of the keys was held by an American army officer. Uh, so in other words, uh, another country could control uh, Britain's nuclear deterrent. In the DPRK, no other country holds the key to its nuclear weapons. No other country has the codes for DPRK nuclear weapons or can stop the DPRK from using them. Even the reactionary conservative British former Premier John Major, if anyone can remember him, in a backhanded compliment to the DPRK, admitted that the DPRK has undiluted sovereignty. The DPRK's no-nonsense, independent, spirited approach is worthy of support and admiration. Juche, uh, but Juche-based socialism in the DPRK has achieved great miracles in all fields. The DPRK built socialism, uh, not in easy conditions, but on the debris of war and in a small divided country under constant threat from US imperialism and its lackeys. The DPRK was quick to heal the war damage and then industrialize rapidly. During the late 1960s, industrial output, uh, sorry, the late 1950s, that should be, industrial output growth hit 40% in some years. The workers of the Kangson steel plant, which is now the Chalima steel complex, took the lead by doubling production in one go. During the period 1957 to 1970, the DPRK's economy grew by 19.1% per year. Between 1946 and 1984, industrial output value increased by 431 times and national income increased by 65 times. The highly respected UK social scientist, Malcolm Caldwell, who was a lecturer at the School of Oriental and African Studies in his book, The Wealth of Some Nations, noted that from 1954 to 1970-71, the DPRK rate of industrial output growth was 23 0.5% per year, whereas South Korea's was 15.3%. So the DPRK's rate of growth was over 50% higher. The term Korean miracle was actually first used by the famous uh, British communist, uh, Professor uh, Joan V. Robinson of Cambridge University, uh, and she used it to describe not South Korea, but the DPRK. Writing in the highly respected journal Monthly Review in 1964, she said, 11 years ago in Pyongyang, there was not one stone standing upon another. They reckon that one bomb of uh, a ton or more was dropped per head of population. Now a modern city of a million inhabitants stands on two sides of the wide river with broad tree-lined streets, a five-story block, public buildings, stadium, theatres, uh, one underground surviving from the war and a super deluxe hotel. The industrial sector composes of a number of up-to-date textile mills and a textile machinery plant. The wide sweep of the river and little tree-clad hills 
preserved as parks provide agreeable vistas. There are some patches of small grey and white houses hastily built from the rubble, but even there, the lanes are clean and light and water is laid on, a city without slums. The DPRK has full employment. People are guaranteed the right to work by the constitution. And this is underpinned by socialist planning and the independent national economy. Taxation was abolished back in 1974 and the industrial taxing kind was abolished in the period 1964 to 1966. Housing is supplied virtually free of charge. The Pyongyang Metro is one of the cheapest in the world with a flat rate fare of about two pence. Now compare this to fares uh, from transport uh, uh, for London. Education at all levels, uh, starting from kindergarten right up to is free at all levels, starting from kindergarten to university level. DPRK university students are not burdened with heavy debts. Their accommodation and clothing is supplied free of charge. Education has uh, very good facilities. Uh, this can be witnessed at uh, kindergartens such as the Changwan Kindergarten and universities such as the uh, Kim Cheik uh, University of Technology and Kim Il Sung uh, University. Uh, both those universities uh, have e-libraries uh, and these have been built entirely with DPRK funds and resources. Uh, kindergarten children uh, receive five meals a day. Each child gets 120 grams of uh, rice uh, per day, uh, you know, which is a far cry from, uh, you know, the alleged starvation that the imperialist press uh, claims uh, uh, takes place. And as I say, recently a decision was taken uh, at the uh, meeting for, uh, of, of the... Uh, Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea uh, to supply uh, free dairy products to all nursery and kindergarten children. Healthcare is also free, uh, including uh, prescriptions and dentistry. Uh, the DPRK public health system is a self-reliant uh, one and it's a people-centered one. There are no hidden fees or costs uh, in DPRK uh, hospitals, uh, such as uh, parking charges, fees for single rooms, TV charges, all of which exist in the UK. Uh, also in DPRK, you have the section doctor system, whereby doctors actually give up checkups uh, to patients in their homes and make the rounds of uh, localities. In recent years, the sanctions against the DPRK, which have always existed, were increased and expanded, with the UN Security Council imposing different sets of sanctions since 2006. Despite that, the DPRK has continued to maintain a high level of social and welfare spending, and at the same time, carry out massive housing construction, such as Changjong Street, Mirai Scientist Street, Rumyong Street, and transform a town, Samijong, into a brand new socialist mountain city. In 2016, when floods destroyed homes in the northwest of the DPRK, 10,000 new homes were built. In 2020, floods and typhoons hit areas of the DPRK in the summer. Uh, which again destroyed many homes, but new ones were built uh, within the space of a few weeks. This year, uh, the construction of 10,000 new homes in Pyongyang was announced. The DPRK closed its borders on the 23rd of January 2020, but survived for 22 months when some countries would not survive for more 
than a few days, thanks to Duke Chain's self-reliance. The DPRK is standing strong. And of course, you know, I'd also mention that, you know, there's not a, a single case of uh, COVID-19 or a death from COVID-19. Another important uh, achievement of Duce is cultural independence. Over the decades of the DPRK has built a vibrant and dynamic culture uh, that is national in form and socialist in content. It has avoided the trap of restorationism, uh, which means restoring um, archaic, outdated and even reactionary culture on the plea of upholding national culture. But at the same time, it has avoided the westernization and Americanization of culture. Some former socialist countries were heavily infiltrated and seduced by the decadent culture of imperialism. I can remember seeing Madonna and Rambo posters on sale in uh, People's Hungary, or perhaps more aptly, aptly Revisionist Hungary during the 1980s. The DPRK has a genuinely uh, popular culture and bands like the Morombong Band and Chombo Ensemble are world famous. On this uh, subject, uh, I would refer you to the excellent essays produced by Conrad John Marchant of Staffordshire Cafe in Stoke-on-Trent branch of the British Group for the Study of the Duce Idea. Moreover, in the DPRK, people are free from the evils of capitalist society, such as exploitation, oppression, drugs, uh, and violence. In the DPRK, thanks to the Duce Idea, independence and creativity are blooming. In people's career, people are totally united around the leader, the party, and the Duce Idea. People in the DPRK have a high sense of taking ownership of stakeholding, which does not exist in any capitalist country. The single hearted unity of the DPRK is like one big family. There are no strikes, riots, or public disorder in the DPRK. There is no terrorism or unrest. This year, several socialist countries suffered from internal disorder, but the DPRK did not. That's what makes the DPRK different from other socialist countries. And, you know, it's a demonstration of the superior superiority of the Duce idea. Socialism in the DPRK is not a copy of the Soviet Union or China, nor is it dependent on anyone. It is a Korean uh, style socialist system centered on the masses guided by the Duce idea uh, and the great leaders of the DPR uh, and the great leaders, uh, the DPRK worked out unique and original lines, for example, on agricultural collectivization. Now, what about objections to the Duce idea, which I'm sure we've all heard many. Time uh, does not allow me uh, to deal with all of them. Uh, they are many and varied and come from all sides. The imperialists, of course, like to simply say that Duce does not work, that somehow it causes poverty. I think what I've said above and the reality of people's career guided by the Duce idea prove otherwise. It is actually those countries in the third world that are ruled by uh, imperialism uh, and the puppets of imperialism, which have poverty, starvation, famine, and national and massive inequality. Another argument of the reactionaries is that somehow, uh, supposedly, South Korea is developed. However, the reality is South Korea has huge external and internal debts. The external debt of South Korea is uh, 604, $166 uh, $100 million, uh, dollars, easily the highest in the world, and of course, completely unrepayable. Uh, they can never repay uh, those debts. 
uh, you know, uh, never. The internal uh, debt of South Korea uh, is uh, 794 billion dollars. Uh, you know, if people don't believe me, uh, you know, they can easily uh, look this up on the internet. And of course, many South Korean consumers are in debt. South Korea is basically an economic disaster area, and it's also occupied by US troops. And there's a total colony uh, and a puppet regime. And just as a side, uh, COVID-19 is uh, increasing very rapidly uh, in South Korea with the rate of infection uh, has risen uh, fourfold this year and is 10 times that uh, higher than last year. The opponents of a Duce also like to claim that Duce is isolationist or uh, has caused the uh, so-called isolation of the DPRK. Firstly, Duce is not about isolationism. And secondly, the DPRK is not really isolated, it, but has diplomatic relations there are over 100 countries and is a member of a number of international organizations. Of course, the DPRK does not have uh, hand diplomatic relations with a very small handful of countries, notably the US, Japan and Israel. Of course, all the time, the US and other reactionaries tried to isolate and stifle the DPRK. A few years ago, the US ordered other countries to expel DPRK ambassadors or shut down DPRK embassy. So the moves to actually isolate the DPRK do not come from within the DPRK, they come from without it, uh, from outside it. You know, uh, they do not come from the Duke idea, but they come from uh, imperialism. From the so-called left, there are various arguments that like Duce abandons Marxism, Leninism, or is simply Marxism applied to Korea. Uh, we've dealt with arguments uh, uh, like that in the previous session. Some on the left like to argue that Duce is nationalist that it leads to an abandonment of uh, internationalism. Of course, Duce stresses independence, uh, and it recognises that independence is the life and soul of humans. But it's not the same as saying that uh, a country should, I quote, go it alone. What Duce means is that a country should be totally independent, politically independent, and reject subordination to others and uh, dependence on others. This does not mean that cooperation with others is rejected or that the Duce idea means uh, turning one's back on internationalism. Far from it. Guided by the Duce idea, the DPRK has always been internationalist. It has supported revolutionary and anti-imperialist struggles in many countries, such as Vietnam, Cuba, Angola, Egypt and Syria, just to give a few examples. I'm going to conclude here because I've spoken for quite long. And uh, in conclusion, I would again uh, reiterating um, uh, that, you know, people should read uh, In Defense of Duce Korea uh, and Korea of Duce. Also, uh, the series of um, uh, booklets, Exposition of Principles of the Duce Idea, uh, which is published by the DPRK. And I say also the uh, essays by, uh, you know, Staffordshire KFA in the Stoke and Trent group, uh, branch of the British Group for the Study of the Duce Idea on Culture. Uh, thank you for listening. And the questions I'm going to set for last uh, for the next session, which will be the last session because this is a 12 part course, is uh, question one What has Duce achieved in practice? Question two 
what would have happened if the DPRK had not applied Duce? Question three, is Duce isolationism and nation, or nationalism? And question four, how do you argue with anyone who says that Duce is not relevant? Right, I will. Good evening and welcome to part 12 of our online course on the Duce idea. In this session, we will uh, take a look at a general overview of the course. We started the course a year ago. It was an initiative of the British group for the study of the Duce idea, uh, the Korean Friendship Association of the UK, and also the Duce idea uh, study group of Ireland. Uh, we've had 11 sessions so far. The purpose of the course was to give a general introduction to the Duce idea and what it means and indeed what it does not mean. We looked at Duce both as a philosophy and a guide to action. We do not claim uh, that our course is uh, uh, completely comprehensive or the last word on the Duce idea. Instead, we would like to encourage you to study it further and deeper. At the end, I will give a reading list. We started the course by looking at what Duce means. Then we moved on to look at the philosophical system of Duce, focusing on the three concepts of independence, creativity, and consciousness. We moved on to look at the guiding principles of the Duce idea, which govern the uh, practical application of the Duce idea, or if you like, the nuts and bolts of the Duce idea. And these guiding principles uh, that we looked at are Duce in ideology, independence in politics, self-sufficiency in the economy, and self-reliance in national defense. We also examined the relationship between Duce and Marxism and Leninism as this is a topic that frequently comes up. Finally, we looked at the achievements of Duke Chain practice and refuting anti-Duke uh, anti arguments. To sum up the course, I would say in conclusion as follows. Duke Chain stipulates that humans are masters of their destiny and have the power to carve it out. Duce therefore rejects all kinds of superstitious and fatalistic notions about the fate of humans, either being predetermined or controlled by an unseen and mysterious deity that exists outside of time and space and outside of matter. The Duce idea was first offered by the great leader of the Korean people, President Kim Il sung who first outlined it in embryo form at the historic Cologne meeting of young Korean revolutionaries in June 1930. He was systematized and further developed by Chairman Kim Jong-il, who wrote the classic treatise on the Duce idea in March 1982. Duce defines humans as social beings with independence, creativity, and consciousness. The most important thing is to develop the independence and creativity of the people during the stages of the revolution and instruction. The key thing is to take the independent stand in the revolution. This means establishing Duce and ideology, independence in politics, and self-sufficiency in the economy and self-reliance in national defence. Today, the DPRK, led by respected Marshal Kim Jong-un, stands imposingly as a country of Duce, a state of independence, self-sufficiency and self-defence. The DPRK has survived for nearly two years with its borders closed, when some countries would not even last a day. The DPRK has 
zero cases of COVID-19. Thus, the Duce idea is a great philosophy of independence. Duce combines both the national and international uh, duties of the working class. It's not going alone nationalism. It has captured the imagination of many progressive people uh, all over the world. Over a thousand Duce idea study groups exist in the world uh, with an international institute of the Duce idea He, uh, headquartered in Tokyo and uh, regional institutes of the Duce idea in Asia, Africa, Latin America, and even Europe. As the late Dr. Vishnuraf, Director General of the International du Institute of the Duce Ideas, said, study the Duce idea, it costs nothing but pays in plenty. And, you know, I would recommend the people read the following books, some of which are online, some of which can be uh, bought um, second hand. Uh, and they are as follows. On the Duce idea by comrade Kim Jong-il. On establishing the Duce outlook on the revolution. Also by comrade Kim Jong-il. The three volumes of On Duce in Our Revolution by President Kim Il-sung, On the Korean People's Struggle to Apply the Duce Idea, also by President Kim Il-sung. Uh, the 1984 book, uh, though it was published a long time ago, it's still quite good, I think. Uh, it's called The Immortal Duce Idea by Professor Kim Chang-hwa. And you have the uh, series of uh, what I call the little blue booklets, uh, uh, exposition of principles of the Duce idea. Uh, that is a set of uh, five uh, separate booklets. Uh, you know, they're about, you know, 100 pages each. Uh, and they, they are online in different places. And, uh, you know, dare I mention, my own books, In Defense of Duce Korea, Victory of Duce Korea is a Science, Korea of Duce. And we will be also uh, publishing the uh, materials, uh, the, lecture, uh, the lectures uh, that I've given uh, from this course as a book uh, later this year. So I say uh, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.